People's metabolisms are fucked, and that's because they spend well over 50% of their time in their fitness journeys dieting. The average American attempts 126 diets in their lifetime, still ending without any sustainable physique results. And the reason why the average American attempts 126 diets is because 95% of people fail their diets. And the number one reason why they fail is because their metabolisms were never ready to diet in the first place. This is only going to lead to people frustrated and constantly trying to get leaner in a body that will not get leaner. And this will lead to not recovering from your training sessions and finding it difficult to even show up. Obviously, this is a big problem. So I'm going to show you our three-step process to unfucking your metabolism and taking you from a chronic dieter to somebody who has built a body and a lifestyle that you no longer need to diet from again. So if you care at all to be like the 5% of people that do succeed, maintain the results, and bulletproof their metabolisms, pay very close attention. The very first step to unfucking your metabolism is establishing maintenance calories. Working with our client Dahlia, we established maintenance calories and we stayed there for three months to create this transformation that you see on the screen right here. Just by eating maintenance calories alone and not accidentally dieting by under eating all the time, her body was finally able to recover from training build muscle and start responding again. So the first step is to find your maintenance calories. The way we're gonna do this, we're gonna download an app like MyFitnessPal, we're gonna track the calories we are currently consuming every single day for 14 to 21 days. After those two or three weeks pass, we wanna take the average amount of those calories that we have consumed. So let's say your week of eating looks a little like this. You're gonna add up all seven of those days calories to get one big number here. From here, define that number by seven, and that was your average calorie intake for the week. Now, I want you to take this number and compare it against this chart that we've created here. This is the chart that we've taken from hundreds of client transformations over the last six years to show you what your maintenance calories ultimately can be when your metabolism is operating at the level it should be. Now, if you feel like you're pretty far off that number right now, that's okay. Make sure you stay for step three of this video. The second step is to weigh yourself consistently. And by consistently, I mean at least four times per week. The reason you wanna start doing this is because you need to get into the routine of consistently tracking your data. What does not get measured does not get improved. Over that first 14 to 21 days, when you're trying to find your average maintenance calories, let's say that you're gaining one or two pounds a week, you probably know that you're not actually at maintenance calories, but you're maybe in a calorie surplus. On the other hand, if you're tracking your food for 14 to 21 days and you're starting to lose weight, you probably know that you're in a little bit of a calorie deficit. Looking at the data, understanding the basics of communicating with your body is what's gonna help you build a foundation to not just build your metabolism, but continue making results long term. Step three, take weekly progress photos. Yes, this is in here, and the big reason why is because most people skip doing this. Most people do not want to take that photo and even have that saved in their camera roll. But what do you think the first step of creating change is? Probably getting a little bit uncomfortable with where you currently are. I recommend taking these progress photos on Sunday day at the very end of each week. Not only is this a great accountability tool for yourself, you see these back-to-back -back progress photos and you see a lot of positive change here. While Dahlia's weight did not change a whole lot between these photos, she did have to get comfortable eating a little bit more than she was used to. But the reason she was comfortable with that is because each week with her progress photos, she was seeing improvements happen. The second step is to optimize your training. Now this doesn't sound super sexy, but optimizing your training is a key to unfucking your metabolism. For example here, our client Maddie reduced her training frequency from six days down to five days when she started, her leg day frequency from three days down to two days, and she cut the amount of volume that she was doing in half. In one week's time, she dropped seven pounds in stress, water weight, and inflammation, just because she had no idea she was underfeeding herself and overtraining herself, which was leading her to consistently wonder why she was not getting lean or seeing any results reflect on both the scale or in the mirror. Now, when you look at these client transformations, nobody here saw drastic changes changes in their scale weight, but they did see drastic changes in their body composition. How could that be the case? Why is that the case? Well, each of these individuals added more muscle tissue in the process of building their metabolism. You must understand something. Muscle is totally responsible for the shape that you have in your physique and for how many more calories you are burning on a day-by-day -day basis, meaning more muscle, faster metabolism. So Chad, how do we get more muscle? How do we do this? Three steps. One, just like Maddie, we're gonna reduce our training volume to just six to eight sets per muscle group in the gym. That might feel like it's not enough at all. That's on purpose because that leads right to the next step. We're gonna learn how to train with a full range of motion. 
motion. This is not a game about how much you can do in the gym or how much volume we can do in the gym. It's a game of how you are performing every single exercise, every single set, and every single rep. So that means instead of going halfway down on the leg press, going all the way down. Why? Well, you're going to train a fuller volume of the muscle. You're going to get your muscle into a fully lengthened position, which causes more growth. You are going to increase the safety of all the lifts that you were performing because your joints are under much more load and much more stress by not taking them through a full range of motion. And third, you're going to get consistent measurements. Like I said earlier, what does not get measured does not get improved. If we're getting inconsistent data all the time, how are we going to make consistent progress? Meaning, that if your reps are going down 80% of the way on some reps, 40% of the way on some reps, 50% of the way on some reps, but the next week you go into training and then you go all the way down, you're probably going to see quite the reduction in load that you were using in the gym. That might frustrate you and it's also going to lead to inconsistent data that you're receiving from your training sessions. So all in all, by training a full range of motion, you're going to get more out of your exercises and likely feel that all the exercises that you're performing are a lot harder than they used to be. Meaning you have an opportunity to build more muscle and meaning you have an opportunity to make more progress faster than you've seen in the last year or more. Step three is we're actually going to train those exercises close to failure. That does not mean that your technique fails close to failure. That means that your technique and your range of motion stays consistent throughout the entirety of the set and you really practice maintaining that while getting close to failure. It doesn't mean all the way to failure all the time, but close enough to actually see progress and simulate development, which is at least within three reps shy of failure. This is an example of a set that is pushed with great technique, full range of motion, three reps shy of failure. You learn to do these things, and like Maddie did, you're gonna save a lot of stress on your body by training class. And you're gonna save a lot of time by getting more out of all of your exercises and more out of all of your effort in the gym without having to do crazy amounts of volume. This is what's going to make the biggest impact on your physique. Because no matter what gas we put in the gas tank, the car's not gonna run without the engine running. No matter how healthy you're eating, physique's not gonna change unless your training is driving to change. Your training, is like the engine of a car. And that takes us to the very last step, building your metabolism. Now it's time to fully support your metabolism building up, and fully support all of that new progress that you're making in training, which in turn is going to completely change your physique. For example, our client Cindy over time increased her calories nearly a thousand while creating this change you see right here using these three steps that I'm about to teach you. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor our body's feedback. Pay attention to how your body weight is fluctuating when you're weighing yourself at least four times a week. Pay attention to how your progress photos are shifting week by week. Is your body weight staying the same? Is your body weight increasing one or two percent? Is your body weight decreasing one to two percent? Is training recovery improving? Is sleep improving? Is hunger going up? Is energy going up or down? Those are all things that you want to be paying attention to and taking note of week by week. Again, this isn't about being in the calorie deficit. This isn't about losing fat, but this is about focusing on how your body's feeling, performing, and looking every single week. Now, once you're getting a little bit more in tune with your body's feedback, start slowly increasing your calories using this framework I'm about to share with you right here. If you find that your body weight does not move for two weeks and you have more of an appetite, bump up one to 200 calories. If your body weight does not move for two weeks and you have no appetite, bump up maybe 50 to 100 calories. If your body weight goes down after two weeks, bump one to 200 calories. If your body weight goes up after two weeks, just hold and let that play out. Now, understand this. If you're being super inconsistent with your training, being super inconsistent with your calorie intake day to day, then the body feedback that you're receiving is inconsistent. You cannot make any decisions on inconsistent data. So these adjustments up do not need to be crazy large. For some of you, this might feel pretty uncomfortable to do. So keep it minimal, keep it small. But something you will notice is from the consistency in calorie intake and from the improvements that you're making in training, you're pretty bound to see hunger go up. Probably feel hungrier than you have in years. That's all a good thing because that's your metabolism talking to you. That's your body saying, hey dude, you've been overtraining me, overdoing shit, and underfeeding me for such a long time now. I'm finally gonna speak up and let you know how hungry I've been this entire time. Please get back to me. After about 90 days, you get a choice to choose what path you wanna go down. Is your body holding a little bit more body fat still and you think you can lose some body fat? Cool. 
It's your body thoroughly enjoying this and you feel amazing. You look amazing. Just stay on this path. Do you feel like right now you're, you're a little bit on the leaner side? You want to keep adding some more tissue? Then go down the path of gaining more tissue. At some point, just by keeping your calories the same, the amount of progress that you're going to see very early on within the first 90 days will slowly start to diminish. So you will have to choose a path of either lose fat or gain muscle. The beautiful part here is you're now in a body that can respond. You're now in a body to where if you are gonna diet, it's gonna feel super easy. You're now in a body to where if you do add more calories and go to a calorie surplus, it's gonna be way harder to gain fat than it used to be. So that's it. This is our three-step framework for unfucking your metabolism. To recap, number one, finding your maintenance calories. Number two, optimizing your training. And number three, building your metabolism. It's worked for hundreds of clients. If you do it correctly, it will absolutely work for you. Obviously, the first step here is to find your maintenance calories. If you want a video to help you with that exact process, go ahead and check that out right here. We'll see you in the next one.